Yeah, de definitely better than where I'm sitting. Yeah, me too. <laughs> wow. That's the backyard. That's it, nice. Thank you. This, this is where I'm sitting without, hold on, can I do it? No, you, you keep having that background and it cuts off your ears, so you look like kind of funny. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm trying to see if I can do it. Uh, hold on. <clears throat> Well, I think on Zoom, you can change your background to do like different exotic places. Well, I, I did, but I didn't want to do this one because I didn't want that one <laughs> behind me. Oh. <laughs> I didn't want to make anyone mad with that. Um, yeah, you get the Red Sox stuff back there? Yeah, so I fair I better go with the Forks Nation. Yeah, that's, that's a better one for you. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, all right, maybe Pat's got a better connection this time. Yeah. Pat, how's your connection this time? Got to unmute her. Thank you. Pat, how are we doing? Can you hear me? I can hear you. You got a better connection? I'm on a computer now in my house, yeah. We were driving Good. before, so. Did, did you hear me explain where that $500,000 $500, came from? I do not totally understand that, and I have been on some emails with some very nervous people, and if it looks like the two million is the saving grace here, and I'm not so sure that's true. Right, T take that, let's just agree for a minute, it's two million, take that and subtract it from our deficit, and I think at the time we were using 1.6 as a savings, so if you take the 1.6 minus the 1.1, I think that's where someone got the 500,000. Can you say that one more time? Yep. At one point, I think someone said when we first started looking at this, the district could save 1.6 million and our deficit was 1.1 million. If you do the math, that could be where someone came up with the 500,000. Okay, and my understanding was that it was going to be that if you got this retiree insurance to go through, that it was going to save the district that 500,000. So that's not true. Well, it would make up for any deficit we had and then you take how much is coming in from the savings of the retirees minus our deficit, and that's how much the district would be to the black. Okay, and I'm not good with all this math with this stuff, but I guess what I'm saying is I very strongly think and urge that the district should have this ready. Like, if this goes through, you mm -hmm. guys know the math. Can you put out there what, it, what effect it's going to, how much is it truly going to save in one year? How much is it going to save for, to, to get us out of the hole for next or for this school, coming school year? Mark, Mark Petrino, you're on. Did you hear all of Pat's question? Uh, just now I did. All right. That is something we, we can show Thursday night, I think. Mark, Mark's going to give a budget update Thursday at the board meeting, Pat. I think yep. that's something he, he could show. Can, can you repeat that again for Mark? I think we need to know exactly how much, if this insurance thing goes through, what are we really saving the district? And how much more are we still in the hole? And where, what are the cuts? I mean, I've heard from two cuts to 17 cuts, and it changes. And I think that that, that is being responsible for us. And I am also going to throw this out while I'm thinking about it. I have not gone back and listened to a a tape, I've heard different things, but I'm just going out there and saying, I heard something about a teacher, teachers getting a four to an 8% raise. That is not true. And again, Mark, I don't know. I was told that you had said it and it would have been in the past. I don't know if that was actually said or not, but we have given, and now we're gonna do this and I'm gonna put it out there because no, I, I feel for those that, could get caught. I also feel for the retirees, we, I believe we gained a lot of money on the 92 clause and I don't want to hear forget it because it's there and the district made money on a mass exodus of teachers and what are we going to do next year and this is for the board members if it comes down to we're in a hole again. Are we going to chip away at our, our regular employees um, insurance? Like I'm just, I'm very concerned and I I just feel for the retirees. I think a lot of that, Pat, we need to address at the board meeting Thursday because this isn't the forum, but I, I will address and make sure Mark addresses that one question at, at the board meeting as well. Okay, thank you. Pat, I'm going to meet you back up for a minute. Yep. 
All right, at 6.01, let's start the, the meeting. Okie doke, well, welcome everybody to our, our third uh, session from the retiree town hall meetings. Um, really quick, I want to just introduce myself for people that may not know who I am. My name is Ed Vaughn. I'm the senior partner at the ENB Insurance Agency. Uh, we have Kristen Wall from my office on this call, as well as Cindy Wise from Humana. Uh, for people that are not familiar with ENV, we're a 32-year-old employee benefit consulting firm. We have about 40 employees. We currently service over 1,000 uh, corporate accounts on the Northeast. But more importantly to you folks, we have over 130 school districts that we work with in New York State. And we have you know, spent most of my last 20 years working with school districts and, and this type of work. So um, with that said, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go through a, uh, a PowerPoint presentation that Deborah really talks about Medicare. And then we were asked to do an analysis that uh, compares the current level of benefits to the options that the district is considering. And I also wanna say there has been some upgrades um, to my analysis, which we did not change the analysis um, yet, but I'm going to get a copy of the upgrades to Joe and Mark tomorrow, and they can and they can disperse that to the retirees so they have that, um, so everybody has the same information. I will go over, as I go over the analysis tonight, I will point out to you the upgrades that were made to make sure that these benefits were going to meet uh, the in-force benefits or be something better than what we currently have. Um, but before I go into the PowerPoint, I wanted to really, uh, really address three main questions that, I, that I've been getting from any of the retirees that I've been talking to so far. Um, and the first one is the timing. You know, we're in the middle of a pandemic across the country, and certainly I don't think anybody would disagree that, you know, this whole timing is crazy. But unfortunately, many, many districts are faced with having to uh, put together their budget and balance their budget. And um, even though the budget vote got moved to June, they still have to get their ducks in a row. And even more concerning is we're not quite sure how much aid the governor is going to give us. And then we're being told that there may be some mid-year changes on top of that. So there's a lot of concern for a lot of districts going through this. And, um, you know, it is a rough time, but, you know, things do have to move on um, in, in, in that direction. The district is not taking this decision lightly. This is something that we are trying to vet out all the different options and thoughts and ideas, and, and they'll do so. And you're not the only district at this time that's going through the same thing. I mentioned earlier that Kenna Jahari is doing this with the retirees for 7-1. Um, uh, Mattered Waddington is going for 7-1. Harpersville uh, made a move for 4-1 with their retirees. Owego is making a move for 4-1. The earliest that Shenango Forks could do this would be 7-1. So I want to assure the retirees that if this does go through, this is not something that's going to happen overnight. Nobody's going to get blindsided. We'll answer everybody's questions. At the end of the presentation, anybody that wants to email me their name and number, we can have Humana call those people to verify any doctors, um, any prescriptions, how things are covered just to have a, another level of confidence that they're going to be fine with what they're currently doing now. Um, <clears throat> so that was the first question. The second question is, you know, when things seem to be too good to be true, they usually are. So how can these carriers give us as good or better benefits than we have today for such a lower cost? And the answer is uh, one of, of three answers I put on here. First of all, uh, currently, Medicare is paying 80% of the claims from anybody that's a post-65 retiree. However, the district is being charged the same premium for those people as they are for the people that are under 65, where Excellus pays all the claims. So there's no discount there. That's a huge difference. The second thing is that under a Medicare policy, everybody is listed as a single. Okay, so if the single rate is $400, a family rate would, would be $800. Under our current Excellus program, that is not the case. The district is being charged the full family rate, which is a factor of 2.5 times. So if the single rate for Shenango Forks is $800, 
the family rate is not 1,600, it's a little over 2,000. It's 2.5, so that's another area where the, the district can save. The other, um, the other difference is, well, that's my thought here. Oh, Medicare, excuse me, Medicare is paying these carriers uh, to, to provide better benefits and to better manage these claims. Medicare is convinced that these large national carriers can better manage these claims uh, than they can themselves. And so that's the reason why um, that, it's, that these rates are where they're at. The other question is, you know, why are we using a consultant versus talking to uh, the carriers direct? And there's a few things to respond to that. Uh, first thing is not all carriers will work with clients directly. Some carriers do and some carriers don't. Um, the first thing is a carrier, no matter who it is, whether it be Excellus or Hartford or United or Humana or Aetna, they can only talk to you about themselves and they're not going to know what other carriers do and they can't put together an analysis to discuss the good, the bad, and the ugly. So it would be very hard to distinguish, you know, what would be a better option for you um, by talking to a carrier direct. Uh, the other thing is the rates are the same. There is no rate discount. If you're not using a consultant, the rates are the same. So there's no advantage for that. The fourth thing is, ENV and we have a call center. We have a call center that's nine people that works eight to five Monday through Friday and they are there to be your advocate. ENV does not work for Aetna or Humana or Excellus. We work for you, we're your advocate. So we're there to answer your questions. We're there to handle any issues that come up but I don't care what carrier we deal with, there's gonna be issues. We heard several people today talking about issues that they currently have with the Excellus program. And I think Cindy graciously um, offered to help those people even solve those issues. So having a call center and somebody to speak to is very important. Now all carriers have call centers. What, what I found over my, my years of being in this business is you get put into what I call the 1-800 shuffle or you get put into what I call the black hole and you have to call directly. And a lot of people don't understand insurance so they don't know what to ask for, or how to say it. So by calling ENV, our people are trained here to understand the language and to help those people. We also have two people in my office that are CMS certified experts. All they do is work with uh, post-65 retirees morning, noon, and night, and they're there to help them to be their advocate. Uh, that's a huge resource. So those are the three questions that we got asked quite a bit. We're gonna go through the PowerPoint in the analysis and what we're asking is that for everybody to hold your questions till the end, the, the, the presentation is designed to answer hopefully most of your questions. When we're done with the presentation, we will open it up and we'll stay here as long as we need to, to answer every question. And then if anybody has anything specifically that they wanna talk about but not in public, they can email me their name and number and then we will have uh, Humana or myself, uh, call them directly and to help them with any questions they have um, about their own situation. So uh, with that said, we're gonna go to the, the, uh, the PowerPoint presentation. And the first thing is really to talk about Medicare and, and Medicare plans. And you, know, you can see the first thing we talk about is a Medicare supplemental policy. And a supplemental policy is just that. It supplements Medicare. After Medicare pays the claims, the supplemental policy comes in and pays the benefits as well. Typically they cover 100%, so the retirees will not have any deductible co-insurance or co-pays to meet other than prescriptions. Under Medicare supplemental policies, uh, you do have to, be, uh, you have to be covered with Part A and Part B. Um, typically with Medicare uh, supplemental policies, you have three different ID cards. You've got a Medicare card, a Medicare sub card, and a prescription drug card. Now new to this year, uh, for Medicare supplemental policies, the Medicare um, has changed the Plan F. The Plan F is the name of the plan that would typically cover 100% of all the benefits that they list on their services. And effective uh, January 2020, anybody that turned 65 after January would no longer be eligible for Plan F. They would have to be eligible for Plan G. And Plan G is the same benefits as Plan F, except for the Part B deductible would not be met. 
So this is a would be a, a negative, um, as I've said in the board meeting and today as well. So we're not really looking at, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, Excellus Medicare sub policy as a benefits that would be considered as good. The Medicare Advantage plan basically provides Medicare benefits through a private insurance company, as I said earlier, and includes Part A and B benefits. It also includes the Part D, which is the prescriptions. Um, the out-of-pocket cost depends on type of plans purchased. Keep in mind, the district does not have any interest in, in putting in a plan that would be less that would be considered less than what we have in place now. You know, the, this analysis that I've done has been reviewed by NYSET several times to make sure that they would consider these plans as good or better benefits. Actually, after my second meeting, I had a gentleman call me and I forget his name, but I told him, keep in mind, this is the same plan that the superintendent would be on when they retire. And so they're not, they're not looking to negotiate for a program that's not going to cover benefits either. So, um, you know, that's, you know, I didn't say that in the first two meetings, but I thought about that afterwards because in, I remember in, in um, Owego and in Deposit, both superintendents were within a, a year of being retired when they negotiated to put those plans in and they went on those plans. Um, one ID card for all benefits under Medicare Advantage plan, okay? And then I put down here, Medicare plans network is irrelevant. Now, when I say network is irrelevant, what I mean is the network is irrelevant compared to our current program now with Excellus. As we look at a Medicare, um, a Medicare plan in general, it becomes not do you participate with Excellus or do you participate with the Hartford or Humana or Aetna, it is do you accept Medicare or do you do Medicare assignment? And 98% of the providers in this country um, subscribe or are part of Medicare, Medicare assignment. With Excellus, 98% of the providers in our 31 counties are part of their program. Nationally, Excellus told us that 80% of the providers are part of their network nationally. So you can see there's either way, there's a huge uh, selection of providers. I don't really see a provider uh, being an issue. So the next page is the network. So when we talk about this, really it's, it's, a, it's a passive network program. And we talk about, when I say the word PPO, that sometimes would imply that there's better benefits in network as there are out of network. And in this case, it's not the true, or it's not true. It, the uh, benefits are the same, whether you're seeing a provider in the network or not in the network. It all comes down, do that, does that provider uh, do Medicare or Medicare assignment? And if they do, we should not have an issue, okay? Um, retirees do not have to do anything with billing. The claims are handled all electronically through the carriers, and um, we should not see any issues from, from that standpoint. Then I put together a few uh, frequently asked questions, and the first one is, you know, how is a Medicare Advantage different than a Medicare Supplemental Plan, which we just really just, we just discussed. However, what I want to talk about here is that with Medicare Advantage plans, these Medicare Advantage plans that keep their subsidies and to be part of the Medicare program, they have got to provide amazing service and they have got to provide um, better than Medicare benefits. They've got to you know, uh, have top line benefits. And both Aetna and Humana are rated 4.5 out of five stars, which is very high for both. So they're both very well rated. Next question is, will I have to switch doctors? And as I already said, as long as your provider accepts Medicare or Medicare assignment, you should not have to switch. I have, we, we typically do not have a provider issue. And as I said already, 98% of the providers nationally will accept Medicare in some form. Now, what, we, what I have talked about in the past is once in a while, we'll see a private contractor um, physician, which won't take anybody's coverage. And those providers will typically say, Ed, pay me $5,000 and you'll have 24-7 access to me directly, sign this contract. You would already, retirees will already know if their provider does not accept Medicare, they'll already know that. And I, I have never, in my 32 years, I used to say all the time, I had not seen a private contracting position. And then four years ago, when I first started working with Harpersville, we found one there. There was a podiatrist that decided to become a private contracting position that we had to deal with in that area. And that's the only one that I know of um, personally, and not that there's not more. That's the only one I've run into so far with any of the schools that I work with. Um, our claims processed, you know, Medicare to a Medicare supplemental policy, claims are submitted to Medicare first, and then Medicare pays, and then a supplemental carrier comes on top and pays afterwards, all done behind the scenes through Medicare. Under the Medicare Advantage, claims are submitted directly to the Medicare Advantage carrier. 
So they, the claims go right to the Medicare Advantage carrier and they pay them and then the retirees are, are fine. Shouldn't have to do any, any lifting at all. Uh, what tier is my prescription on? So you guys um, under the classic blue, you have a 210 drug card, which means you pay $2 for generic drugs and you pay $10 for a, um, a name brand drug. If you're under the PPO plan, it's a 5, 15, 30 uh, drug program where it's five for generic, 15 for preferred name brands and 30 for non-preferred name brands. And uh, so under the 210, it's as simple as generic or preferred, okay? And, or excuse me, generic or brand. And um, it, it really shouldn't be any issue there. However, I wanted to talk about, you know, with any carrier, um, when you look at the formulary, tiers can change, whether it be Excellus or Hartford or anybody else. So what we were told was that if a copay is going to go down, it can change at any time to benefit the retirees. If it's going to increase in cost, it can only happen in January. And, um, and then whether, and that happens with all carriers, and people may or may not see it based on the drugs they use, but we do see drugs changing tier from time to time. The industry standard is typically quarterly. You know, we'll see drugs, you know, drugs are changing all the time. There's new drugs that come out, drugs that are better. So, I mean, drugs will change their tier structure based on where they fall in line. Um, next page talks about another prescription issue that gets brought up is, is there a donut hole? And you do not have to worry about a donut hole. A donut hole is a program that is a gap in coverage for prescriptions and it is typically only found on individual plans. This is a group policy. This is not an individual plan. This, uh, this policy that you're, that we're going to talk about today is not something that you could buy off the street. You could not get this rate and you could not get these benefits off the street. This is a group program that's being customized specifically for Shenango Forbes. So there would be no donut hole to have to worry about. Is there a pre-existing condition clause? The answer is no. No matter what you're being treated for, whether it be heart issue, a cancer issue, a lung issue, any prescriptions, I mean, there is no pre-existing condition clause to be concerned about. What happens if my spouse is over 65 also? If your spouse is over 65 years old, that person would transition to the Medicare plan as well. And then we have another question, what happens if my spouse is under 65 and I'm over 65? And typically what happens is that the coverage follows the retiree. So if the retiree was over 65 and the spouse was not, the retiree could go over and the spouse would go over when they turn 65. And then if the retiree was not 65 and the spouse was, typically they would wait until, um, until they turn 65. We are going to double check with, with both Humana and Aetna to see if they would allow anybody that turned 65, regardless of whether they were the retiree or not, to, uh, to hop over. So we'll confirm that uh, with the carriers. Um, do I need to be enrolled in Part A and Part B? The answer is yes. Just like today, you need to be enrolled in Part A and Part B. A question that got asked to me earlier today was, will what I pay for well, what I pay for Medicare change? The answer is no. You shouldn't. It shouldn't change at all. Okay. If you're paying for Part B now, it'll be the same Part B uh, Part B premium. What happens if I have any questions? If you have any questions or concerns or issues, you'll be able to contact the ENV call center. There's our number, a 1-800 number there, and I've got our email address um, for the call center. My own web, my own email address is on the website from the school district as well. And then after the presentation, as I said earlier, anybody that wants to email me their name and number, uh, we will have Humana contact, um, contact those people directly and work with them to verify anything that they need to have verified. The last page on this is just a list of schools that we have worked with on these Medicare products. And then so in full transparency, I just want to mention that with Shenango Valley, not all of the, all of the retirees moved over. The teachers did not. Everybody else did. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that Johnson City uh, is not on this list. They have gone to Humana, and they went to Humana approximately four years ago, and uh, they've been with them ever since. And I, I put this page up here not to uh, – really the, the main reason is to show people at Shenango Forks that you're not the guinea pig. A lot of these schools have done this, and, there's, and right now there's even more schools. I'm probably in the middle of working with 10 or 15 more schools as we speak that are doing this evaluation now because they're faced with a huge budget crunch going forward. So 
so that was the PowerPoint presentation. And while we're going to go into uh, the, the analysis here that Joe's going to put up for us, and um, we'll go down through and, and, um, and work, this, work this analysis. So, and, and I want to just reiterate, because uh, I know Pat asked about it earlier, is there have been some upgrades, and it is very important we get this new information to all the retirees. So I will put together tomorrow an upgrade list that I will get to Joe and Mark, and they can get it out to the retirees so they can have this, Pat, and then they'll know um, what the changes have been made. And I'll point those changes out tonight as we go through this, just so there's, that we have clarification. So the way that this analysis has worked is on the left-hand side, you can see that's the Excellus Blue Cross Blue Shield current classic blue plan. And then to the right of that is the PPO plan. There are six people at the district that have that PPO plan. Most of the people at Shenango Forks have the classic blue plan. Then we have the Medicare benefits and how, what Medicare pays. And then we have the Excellus Medicare uh, Medicare SUP program, I've got an F labeled G, and we'll talk about what, what their uh, coverages are. To the right of that is going to be, and if you have a black and white copy, it'll be gray on my copy and on the screen here, it's green. If the benefits are going to be equal to or better than, it's a green color, or in your case, gray. If it's a negative um, benefit, it would be a red color on my chart or a dark color on your chart. And then to that, I've got Humana next to that, and then I've got Aetna next to that, and you can see I've got the same pluses or minuses there. One thing that I do want to point out as I go down through this analysis, when I say a zero copay, that means when you go into for that specific visit or that service, you pay zero copay, so it's 100% coverage. And it means the same as when I say 100% after Medicare. It's just the way the different carriers label it, and I've gotten a couple of questions today, like what's the difference between 100% of Medicare and a zero copay? And the answer is no difference. It's both paid the same way. It's just the way that the carriers word it. With the Medicare SUP, remember, they pay after Medicare, so they want it labeled. We pay 100% after Medicare pays their portion. So that's how they want it labeled. So with that said, we go down through here. The first thing under the benefits is deductible. Under the Blue Cross Classic Blue Plan, there's an individual deductible of $50 and a 150 deductible for uh, family members. Under the PPO, there are no deductibles in network. And I'm going to focus in network because I believe that uh, people are most are going to be in network anyways. Under the Medicare benefits, you can see their benefits there. It's typically a Part A deductible of 1,408 and a Part B deductible of 198. And with Medicare, typically they pay 80% and the employee pays 20%. Under the Excellus Medicare plan, you can see they cover those part, the Part A and Part B deductibles. So a retiree would have no deductible to meet under the Excellus plan. So it's going to be a better benefit than we have um, under the Classic Blue benefit and the same benefit under the PPO in network. Under Humana and under Aetna, there is no deductibles to be met at all. So it's going to be better coverage under the um, Classic Blue plan and the same coverage under the PPO plan. Standard co-payments. Standard co-pays under the Excellus Classic Blue, there's no co-pay. It's a co-insurance, which we'll talk about next. Under the PPO plan, they would pay a $10 co-pay for visits. Under Medicare, they don't have co-pays, it's co-insurance. Under the Excellus Medicare, um, the, the uh, Medicare program, there is no co-payments. It's gonna be, you'll see there'll be, it's 100% coverage after Medicare. So there is no standard co-payment other than your prescription drug cards. With Humana and Aetna, there, are, there is no standard copay other than zero. It's a zero copay, which means you pay nothing when you see zeros, you pay nothing at the time of service. So that's going to be as good or better that we currently have in place now. Standard coinsurance, where it says 20%. What that means is that after you met your deductible, you would pay 20% and Excel would pay 80% until you've reached an out-of-pocket maximum of $400 for an individual and $1,200 for family. Under the PPO plan, there is no coinsurance. It would just be simply a, uh, a copay. When you get under the Excellus Medicare plan, the coinsurance is also covered. So the retirees would not have to meet a deductible, no, nor coinsurance. It's all covered 100%.
So it will be considered as good or better on both, on both scenarios. With the uh, Humana and Aetna, there is no standard coinsurance, so it doesn't apply. Um, so it's going to be as good or better than we have now. Out-of-pocket maximum doesn't is is uh, you can see it's a 400 for individual and 12 for family under Excellus. Under the uh, Excellus PPO plan doesn't really apply because you're only paying copays. The same thing with Excellus, Humana, and Aetna doesn't apply because you have 100% coverages uh, down the road on the Excellus Medicare plan. And under Humana and Aetna, we're going to see zero copays down the road other than other than prescriptions. Lifetime maximum benefit, which is very important. Right now, our current classic blue is unlimited coverage, and the PPO is also unlimited coverage. Under the Excellus plan, the Humana plan, and the Aetna plan, all three plans are unlimited coverages. There are no limits. So the benefits are going to be as good or better. Next section is physician office visits. So for an office visit under our classic blue, it's the subject to deductible and coinsurance. So you have your deductible and coinsurance. Under Classic Blue, under the PPO, it's a $10 copay. Under the Excellus Medicare plan, it would be covered 100% after Medicare pays their benefits. So it's going to be a better benefit than we have in place now. Under the Humana plan and Aetna, they're both going to be zero copays. So you pay nothing at the time for your doctor visit. So in both scenarios, that's going to be better coverage than we have in play now. Chiropractic coverage. Chiropractic coverage is subject to deductible and coinsurance under the classic blue, under the PPO, it's a $10 copay. Under the Excellus plan, it's gonna be covered 100%, but they cover spinal manipulation only, which is typical, okay? That's typical of our current plan and typical of a lot of plans. Under the Humana plan and under Aetna plan, they will cover um, spinal manipulation with a, uh, a zero copay like they do now. And they're also gonna include routine chiropractic coverage, which is an upgrade. That's a great benefit to have. And as we put these programs in, retirees have loved this program. A lot of them are, are using it, but they were paying for it. The next section is preventative health care services. Under the routine examinations, adult immunizations, mammographies, pap smears, prostate cancer, cancer screenings, and bone density tests, you can see under both Excellus plans, they're paid in full. Under the Excellus Medicare plan, and under the Humana plan and the Aetna plan, all those benefits are going to be covered at 100%. Either pay a zero copay or it's covered 100% after Medicare pays their portion. So the benefits are going to be equal to what we have in place currently. We uh, flip the page. Routine vision exams. Routine vision exams currently are not covered under either Blue Cross Blue Shield plan. They're not covered under the Excellus Medicare plan, so that's the same coverage. Um, Humana, it says on our spreadsheet, not covered. However, this is an upgrade. This is the first upgrade we're seeing. They are going to cover routine vision exams to match the same thing as Aetna. So it'll be a zero copay, one annual eye exam every 12 months. So that'll be added benefits. So that's the first upgrade, Pat, that I'll mention on my sheet um, tomorrow when I do that. Eyewear, frames, and lenses and contacts. Uh, under our current plans, the, um, uh, they're covered at, after cataract surgery. So if you have cataract surgery, there's a pair of glasses that get prescribed. Those glasses would be covered under both Excellus plans. Under the Excellus Medicare plan, it works the same way. It's 100% coverage after Medicare for the, uh, for the cataract surgery glasses. Under Humana, it says Medicare covered only the, like the cataract surgery glasses. However, this is the second upgrade. Met Humana is also going to match the $100 allowance for vision that Aetna's doing. So you'll have Medicare covered services uh, after cataract surgery at a zero copay, and then non-Medicare covered services, you'll be able to have a $100 allowance. And that allowance means you can see anybody you wanna see, and you just get to use up to $100 per year per person for that program. So those are both upgrades. Um, well, an upgrade for Humana, but those are both better benefits than what we have in place now with the Excellus plans. Hearing evaluations. Uh, hearing evaluations currently are covered to are subject to deductible and coinsurance under Classic Blue. Under the PPO, it's a $10 copay. Under the Excellus plan, it covers them 100% after Medicare. So there is no deductible and coinsurance or copay. So that's a better benefit. Under the Humana and under Aetna, they're also a zero copay one every 12 months. So they're also going to be better coverage than we have in place now. 
Again, zero copay means you pay nothing at the time of service. Hearing aids. Hearing aids are currently not covered under the Excellus plans. Under the Excellus Medicare plan, they're also not covered, which is the same coverage. Under Humana, they're not covered, but they have a discount program available through a few of their, through a few of their vendors. Um, so it's the same coverage we have in place now with Excellus. And then Aetna's got a $600 allowance that they allow every 36 months uh, for hearing aids, and that's a benefit that's better than what we have in place now. The next category is inpatient coverage. So for inpatient hospitalization stay, inpatient mental health, and inpatient substance abuse, all are currently covered 100%, okay? Whether it be the Excellus Classic Blue Plan or the PPO Plan. Under the Excellus Medicare Program or Humana or Aetna, those plans are all covered with a zero copay, 100%. Okay, so there's no difference there for, for coverages. The inpatient physician visits are covered the same way. They're currently covered in full, 100%. Under the Excellus Medicare plan, they're also covered 100%. And under Humana and Aetna, there's a zero copay, which means they're also covered 100%. The next thing is skilled nursing facility. Currently under the Classic Blue, it's covered in full. And under the PPO, it's covered in full up to 120 days. Um, and, um, and then 90 day on the renewal with pre-authorization required. Under the Excellus plan, it's a 100% coverage for Medicare, pays zero copay, or you pay zero, um, the plan pays zero, excuse me, after 100 days. This is less than benefit. This is one of the benefits that we have upgraded with Humana. Currently, the Excellus Medicare program covers 100% or 100 coverage up to the 100 days, and it's a difference from the Excellus plan. However, under Humana, it currently says a zero copay for days one through 100, but then plan pays zero after 100 days. That has been changed, so Humana will cover 100% with unlimited days. That's another upgrade to make sure that it was going to be considered as good as what we had in place now. And so that's going to be a better benefit. Same thing with Aetna. It's going to be a zero copay, unlimited days. So it matches the Enforce um, Classic Blue Plan, and it's better than the PPO plan. And to take this one step further, um, Amy had asked me to do a, 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 an analysis. We reached out to all the carriers to ask them specifically how they handle and determine um, skilled nursing facility and how the claims are processed. So we've asked Excellus, um, Humana, and Aetna to give us a little bit more information on skilled nursing for us to report back to the district. But just to reiterate again, I want to make sure people are aware that under Humana, this has been an upgraded change to now be covered 100% for unlimited days. Next category is emergency care. Emergency care, emergency room is currently covered at 100% under the Classic Blue and is covered at $50 copay under the PPO plan. Under the Excellus Medicare plan, it is covered 100% after Medicare, so it's the same benefit as Classic Blue, and it's a better benefit than the PPO. Other on the Humana plan and on the Aetna plan, the same thing. It's covered with a zero copay, so you pay nothing, 100% coverage, so it's going to be the same as Classic Blue and better than coverage with uh, the emergency room. Under the Aetna plan, it does say include worldwide coverage. I mean, so does Humana, and, and we'll get into the international coverage. It's actually a category that's on the one of my back pages, so I'll, I'll address that at that point. Urgent care visits. Under the Classic Blue, it's subject to deductible and coinsurance. Under the PPO plan, it's a $10 copay. Under the Excellus Medicare plan, it is a 100% coverage after Medicare, so that's going to be a better benefit. Under Humana and Aetna, it's a zero copay, which is also a better benefit. Outpatient surgery. Currently under the Classic Blue plan, it's paid in full. Under the PPO plan, it's a $10 copay. Under the Excellus Medicare plan, it's a 100% coverage after Medicare, so it's going to be as good or better than what we have in place now. And under Humana and Aetna, it's a zero copay, so it's also going to be as good or better than what we have in place now. Office surgery is subject to deductible and coinsurance under the Classic Blue Plan. Under the PPO plan, it's a $10 copay. Under the Medicare, the Excellus Medicare plan, it is again covered 100% after Medicare, so it's going to be a better benefit. Under Humana and Aetna, it's a zero copay. 
which means, again, you pay nothing. So it's going to be a better benefit than we have in place currently. Diagnostic lab testing is currently covered in full under the classic blue. And under the PPO plan, it's a $10 copay. Under the Excellus Medicare plan, it's covered 100% after Medicare. So it's going to be as good or better than what we have in place now. Under the Humana and Aetna plans, they're also covered with a zero copay, which means they're also going to be covered uh, or it's going to be as good or better than what we have in place now. Next page addresses radiation therapy and chemotherapy. Both are paid in full under the classic blue plan. Under the PPO plan, they're $10 copays. Under the Excellus Medicare plan, they are both paid 100% after Medicare. So they're going to be as good or better coverage there. Under Humana and Aetna, they're both covered with a zero copay. So they also will be covered as good or better than what we have in place currently. Outpatient mental health um, is subject to deductible and coinsurance under the classic blue plan. Under the PPO plan, it's a, it's a $10 copay. Under the Excellus Medicare plan is covered 100% after Medicare. Uh, so you can see it's better coverage. And under the Humana and Aetna plan, they're also zero copays. So that's also better coverage. Alcohol and substance abuse, you can see is paid in full for 60 visits per calendar year. Additional days may be available. Under the PPO plan, it's covered in full. Under the Excellus Medicare plan, it's 100% after Medicare uh, pays. So it's going to be a better benefit than the classic blue and equal benefit as the PPO. Same thing with Humana and Aetna. There's zero co-pays with unlimited days. They're covered in full. So you see that they're better than the classic blue and the same as, um, as the PPO. And I'm hoping as we look at this, you can start to see a pattern and a trend. So under the Excellus Medicare plan, everything's covered 100% after Medicare pays their portion. So you can see that the retirees don't have any deductible, any co-insurance, any crazy co-pays. It's 100% coverage. Under Humana and Aetna, the pattern there is it's zero co-pays. Zero co-pay means you pay zero at the time of that service. So you can see in many situations, instead of having to pay a co-pay from the PPO plan or having a deductible and co-interest to pay, you pay nothing out of your pocket. So at the time of service, you're paying a lower number. The next category is other services. We get into therapies. We have physical therapy, speech, occupational, pulmonary, and cardiac. Under the classic blue, it's subject to deductible and coinsurance. And under the PPO, it's a $10 copay, max of 45 days combined in and out of, of uh, PT and out of net, um, um, occupational therapy or speech therapy. Under... The Excellus Medicare plan is covered 100% after Medicare pays theirs. Um, so there is no deductible or coinsurance or co-pays. So it's a better benefit. Other, under Humana and Aetna, same thing. It's a zero copay. So those are both enhanced coverages from that benefit. Uh, diabetic supplies, equipment, and education, uh, subject to deductible and coinsurance under the classic blue plan. Under the PPO uh, plan, it's a $10 copay. Under the Excellus Medicare plan, you can see it's 100% covered after Medicare, so it's a better benefit. Under the Humana and Aetna plan, they're both zero copays, so they're also better benefits. Under the Aetna plan, you see it says include supplies to monitor blood glucose. At that the same applies to Humana as well. It's just that that's, a benefit, that's an extra lingo that Aetna had put in their benefits when we did the analysis, but it's the same benefit with Humana. And I also believe Excellus. Um, durable medical equipment, currently a subject to deductible and coinsurance under the classic blue plan. Under the PPO plan, it's a 20% coinsurance, which means you pay 20% of the bill. Under the Excellus Medicare plan, it's 100% coverage after Medicare, so it's going to be a better benefit. As is with Humana and Aetna, they're both zero copays, so on that, it's also a better benefit than what we have in place currently. Prosthetics, subject to deductible and coinsurance. Uh, no calendar year maximum under the uh, classic blue plan. Under the PPO plan, it's a 20% coinsurance with a $15,000 uh, calendar year max. Under the Excellus plan, it is a um, 100% covered after Medicare with, uh, no, with no max or, or no calendar year maximum. So there's no coinsurance and no max, so it's a better benefit. Under Humana and Aetna, same thing. There are zero copays and you have unlimited. Uh, unlimited uh, usage, so there's no limit there. So you have better coverage than what we have in place now. Home health care, 
Home health care is paid in full, 60 visits with an additional 325 additional visits under an enhanced benefit, um, covered in full under the PPO plan. Under the Medicare program with Excellus, it's covered in full 100%. And with Humana and Aetna, there's zero co-pays, so they're also covered 100%. So the benefit is going to be um, better than what we have with the classic blue plan because there's no limitation to days. And that's going to be the same benefit as the PPO because it's going to be covered in full with no um, limitation on visits. Hospice care currently is covered up to 210 days uh, in full under the classic blue plan. Under the PPO plan, it's covered in full with unlimited days. Under the, Medi the Excellus Medicare plan, it's covered 100% after Medicare. So it's a better benefit than what we have in place now under the classic blue plan and the same benefit as we have under the PPO. And the same follows suit with uh, Humana and Aetna. Zero co-pays for both, so it's a better benefit than what we have with the classic blue and the same benefit with the PPO. Dialysis. Dialysis is paid in full under the classic blue plan and the, um, the uh, PPO plan. Under the Medicare program with Excellus, it's paid 100% after Medicare, so it's going to be uh, the same benefit we have in place now. And under Humana and Aetna, they're both zero co-pays, so it also matches the, the enforced benefit. Acupuncture. Acupuncture is currently not covered under the classic blue plan or the uh, PPO plan, uh, nor is it covered under the Excellus Medicare plan. It is, however, covered under Humana and Aetna. Acupuncture is covered with a zero copay, and uh, that's going to be an additional benefit than what we have in place currently. The next category is international coverage, and I have TBD on the spreadsheet. But we do believe, like any other plan, that when you have Excellus and you're out of the country, any emergency would be covered as, uh, as normal benefits. And so that's what we're, gonna, that's what we're assuming at this point. And um, you can see with the Excellus uh, Medicare plan, they're also covering emergencies only, but it's, it has to be within the first 60 days of a travel and it's subject to a 250 deductible with 20% coinsurance with a $50,000 lifetime max benefit. So that is a negative benefit compared to what we have now in place. With Humana and Aetna, they pay 100% of the emergency coverage services out of these countries. So you're going to pay a zero copay when you're out of the country for any, um, any emergency services. You're not subject to any lifetime maximums or deductibles or coinsurance. So the benefits are going to be equal to what we have now in place. Now I have, I've been doing this a long time, I have not seen international coverage really be an issue for anybody because typically under emergency situations, it gets covered. So with Humana and Aetna meeting what Excellus does, there should be no issue there. Lifestyle wellness benefits, currently under the Excellus plans, there isn't one. Under the Excellus Medicare plan, they also don't have one, so it's the same. Under Humana and Aetna, they both have programs. Humana has their Silver Sneakers program, which retirees love. I get asked about that program more times than not. It's a, it's a gym membership program or retirees can be members of gymnasiums as many as they want up and down the country to, to work out and to keep themselves in shape. On top of that, there's plenty of discounts um, that retirees can qualify for in this program. Other the, and under the Aetna program, they call it Resources for Living, which includes their version of the Silver Sneakers program. And again, it's several uh, discounting programs that retirees can take advantage of. So that's, a, that's an enhanced benefit from what we have currently. The next thing is the prescription drugs. We get into the prescription drugs and under the classic blue, we have a, what we call a 210 drug program where you pay $2 for generic drugs and you pay a $10 copay for name brand drugs. If you get a 30 day, or excuse me, a 90 day supply, you pay the same copay. So there's a discount and there's an incentive to get a, a, you know, a 90 day supply, whether it be mail order or direct. There is no specific deductible on that prescription drug card and no annual out of pocket. Under the PPO plan, it's a 5-15-30 prescription program where it's $5 for generics, $15 for preferred name brands, and $30 uh, copay for non-preferred name brands. And as you can see there, there is no discount for a three-month supply. There is no deductible. Then you have an individual and family out-of-pocket max per year, which would be $3,000 for single and $6,000 for family. Under the Excellus plan, they were able to match the two ten and do exactly what we have in place now. We believe if we did choose Excellus, for whatever reason, they would give us both programs to work with. 
but at the time this analysis was done, they had not, uh, they had not come back with the answer yet. Under Humana and Aetna, they have both matched the program where they'll come in with a 210 program for people around that program, and they matched it exactly. And then with the um, uh, Humana of 51530, they've matched that program the way it is um, laid out, and the same out-of-pocket maximum um, for individual and family, 3000 and 6000 Under the Aetna, the same thing is the same 210 program and the 51530 program under the, the PPO program. What Aetna did do is they said, based on when, when the district, if they went down this road and picked them, the first year, because it was less months, would be a lower out-of-pocket uh, maximum. For the first year, then 2021 would go to $3,000. So there was a slight advantage for them there. Um, they have, we looked at this. Currently, we have open formularies. And under the Humana and uh, Aetna program, it would be open. Under the Excellus program, it's closed. Um, and one thing I want to point out too, and I think I don't know if it was Pat or somebody else, I want to make sure that people understand that under the prescription program, we're not trying to change your prescription copays. So if you're currently under the 210 program and you see the 51530, we're not trying to convert you to a different prescription copay program. If you currently have a 210 prescription program, if the district went in this direction, you would still have the same 210. The 51530 program only applies to the people that are currently on the PPO program, which I believe today is six people. So I just want to reiterate that so there's no confusion about having people change their copays for prescriptions. And then the last section is we get into the actual, the actual rates of this. And um, well, before I, before I get into the rates, I want to make a, a comment is the other thing that the district has said to me is that in the event there's any unforeseen expenses that would have been covered under the Excellus plan and that would not be covered under the uh, Humana, Excellus, or Aetna plan, the district is willing to self-insure. Now, as I say that, that part of the agreement would have to be negotiated. So I do not know the terms uh, of any agreement. And I think Joe had mentioned earlier that that portion of it would have to be negotiated and will be discussed with, with the, um, the teachers association and a few people. So I just want to make that clear. The district is willing to self-insure any unforeseen differences, but it does, it is something that has to be negotiated in. Um, now we get to the rates. So we look at the, my rate section currently under the Excellus classic blue plan, the single rate is $813.92 a month per every single and $2,035.97 for every family. And under the PPO plan, it's $759.85 and $1,885.81 for family. When you look at the Excellus rate, it's $489.54 per individual. Okay, under the Humana program, it's 305.19. And 251.64. So it's 305.19 for the people that have the 210 program, and it's 1545, uh, excuse me, it's 251.64 for the people that have the 515.30 plan. You can see quite a bit of difference. Same thing with Aetna, it's 369.19 uh, for people with the 210 program, and it's 515.30, or excuse me, it's uh, 337 for the 515.30 program. The Humana rates will change slightly because of our upgrades that we have made to make sure that this program is going to be as good or better than what we have in place now, there will be a slight change. We're not gonna be off by much, but I just wanna make sure that these won't be the final rates. Once, we, once the district decides what they're gonna do and who they're gonna go with, then we would finalize everything to make sure everything was labeled out in a final proposal and, we'll, and we would submit that out. Now, when you look at this, the Excellus plan would save the district 1.5 million a year and Humana would save the district 2.1 million a year, and Aetna would save 1.9 million a year. So one of the questions that got asked um, earlier was, Ed, is this, what about next year or the year after, and is this a, is this a Band-Aid approach or would this be a long-term approach to you know, helping our problem? And what we did is we took the Humana rates and we, and we, we increased those rates 9% every year and it would take to the year 2031 to equal the Excellus rates as they are today. If we then do the same analysis, but trend the Excellus rates up 5%, which is very conservative, 
at the end of 2031, there's still a substantial difference between the rates. So this is not a bandaid approach. This is a long-term solution. And any of the districts that I work with that have gone in this direction have not deviated from this direction. They've stayed on this program and they've, they've benefited ever since they put the program in. So then I, what I also did to take it one step further is if we take it just to do a compare, and I don't know, I know different bargaining units pay different amounts of money. So I don't really know who pays 10% or 5% or 15%, but just for an example, um, if somebody was to pay 15% of their coverage, that would mean under the current Excellus plan, they would pay $122 a month or $1,465 a year for an individual. And for a family, they would pay $305 a month or $3,663 a year. That same 15% under the Humana rate, instead of paying $1,465 a year, they would pay $549 a year, which is a savings of $900 plus. And under the family rate, they would pay $1,098 a year versus the 3,663. So I wanna point out that the savings on my analysis is a gross number, which means that's the total savings for the retirees and for the district. So to, I can't remember who it was earlier, it might've been Pat or somebody else said, well, how much of that is the district and how much of that is, is the, the retirees? And the answer to that is if, if all the retirees were to pay 15%, then 15% of 200 or $2 million is right around $300,000. So the district would save 1.7. Now that's just an example. I don't, because people pay different amounts. My point is that the district is going to save most of this money because they pay most of the premium. Okay. So that, that's a very important point I want to make out. So with that said, that is, that's a lot of information in a short period of time. And um, we can open this up to questions. Joe, if I forgot anything, let me know and I can, I can go over it. No, Ed, I, I think you got everything. So what questions would we have? Any questions for anyone? Just hit on mute on their screen and, and ask away. Cindy, you figured out how to put your face up there. Well, this is well, this is our third meeting, Joe. So, I, you know, it's well, a good. I'm, lo I'm looking around at a lot of these people were at the first two meetings, so maybe at this point there's not a lot of questions that they have. Well, if there are, like I said earlier, I know I had probably four or five people email me their name and number, which I've already forwarded to Cindy, and um, we are looking into you know verifying some things for them. And if anybody has any questions, any concerns or thoughts, Pat, I'm trying to, to address as many things as, that you come up with just so that we can, uh, you know, try to put everybody at ease. And um, we, you know, I think that, you know, I don't want to speak for the district, but I know this is a, it's a big decision. It's not being taken lightly. And we're trying to educate and help people understand these programs. I think, I think it was the first meeting, Joe, that one of the retirees had spoke to people in uh, deposit in Walton, in Shenango Valley in Johnson City, and it was all positive stuff. I think the one person had mentioned in Johnson City that the person said, well, the only thing we don't like about Humana was they have to pay a $20 copay for prescriptions, but that's what their benefit was. You know, so, and, you know, so to reiterate, your benefits are going to be customized to what your current benefit structure is. So I, I can't emphasize that enough. So I hope- I have a question. Well, Ed, Ed, Linda Roby does have a question. Okay, Linda. I'm really trying to do my homework and I'm looking at medicare.gov online and it says that uh, most Medicare Advantage plans, if you're enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan, most Medicare services are covered through the plan. Shouldn't it say all Medicare services are uncovered? Isn't that like these Advantage plans cover whatever Medicare, plain Medicare would have covered? I'm on medicare.gov and it's saying most. So yeah. I, yeah, why wouldn't it say all? I, I agree with you. Cindy, you want to touch on that? I would think that all the services, would there be anything that Medicare would cover, Cindy, that you would not cover? Cindy? 
I, th I think Ed, she froze herself somehow. She's oh. frozen. Ed, this is Kristen. The only thing I can think of that Medicare covers in its entirety is hospice, if I'm, if I'm not speaking out of turn, Cindy. So that That's would correct. be an example where the Medicare Advantage plan wouldn't cover it because Medicare covers it in full. That's oh, so because I don't know if you can hear me, but my um, internet started fading out, but that's correct. Well, Linda, does that answer your question? No, I'm sorry. I, I don't get it. So the question, um, Cindy, I saw you froze up. Linda had said she was on the Medicare website and it says mm -hmm. that if you're covered on a Medicare Advantage plan, Medicare Advantage plans typically cover most services that Medicare cover. And her question is, why wouldn't say they cover all the services? So Kristen Wall had mentioned, well, the reason they probably put most of it is because there are some situations where Medicare covers everything where the, the policies wouldn't. But in your case, when you're replacing Medicare, Cindy, would, that, would, it be, would there be any Medicare services that you wouldn't cover? Um, the one that Kristen just mentioned is uh, hospice and Medicare continues to provide the hospice benefits. Oh, we so don't, okay. but they do. So, so the answer to your question, Linda, is where Medicare pays 100% already, the Medicare Advantage plan would not need to pay. Mm -hmm. oh, would not need to pay, but it would still be covered. Yes, yes it would still correct. be covered, correct. Okay. And interesting enough, just a side note, um, Humana owns several of the hospice entities in the United States. I think we're the largest owner of hospice programs now in the, in the country. Um, so we're very familiar with hospice and how that all works with Medicare. Thank you. I, ha I do have another question. As um, we're looking at and talking about delving into skilled nursing more carefully, kind of line by line, if you will, I'm feeling like you could say that about almost anything. Um, of course, you understand our experience with our secondary has been, uh, I think, pretty much the retirees would agree the way it works, it's just been phenomenal. So I'm wondering, and this all looks really good on the chart, uh, but take for example, somebody goes to the emergency room. You know, things are not black and white. So could you come up mm -hmm. and say, gee, you went to the emergency room, but you only had a sore throat, we're not covering it, that's not a covered item. because. I, I'm give, using that as an example. I'm trying mm -hmm. to say that you can't compare. You, when you say you're looking into the skilled nursing and that's great, you could almost say, which would be impossible, that you could do that for every for every line by line item because things are not black and white. They're subject to interpretation. So we won't know. Obviously, we won't know until if we pick this up, how it would work. My concern is, will a lot of things be denied? Will a lot of things be subject to interpretation? Well, gee, you really didn't need to have that surgery. We don't see that you really needed to have that. Am, am, am um, I Linda, I, I have not seen that. And the only reason we're delving into skilled nursing is because there was a question about, you know, number of days and do they approve things and not approve things. So what we're going to find out, I believe, when we look into skilled nursing is that people are going to rely on the Medicare guidelines to what, you know, what's covered. And then when you have unlimited days, you know, they still, they still go by the Medicare guidelines. I think it's going to be all the same process. But I will tell you, if there was a major difference in the process from any of these benefits and retirees were getting hurt, we would hear a lot of screaming all over the state because we probably have 20, 30,000 um, retirees in all these schools on these plans. And it would, be, it would be known that this is not something to do. And I'll tell you right now, and if NICE had ever heard that, if NICE had heard that their retirees were yeah. getting hurt in these plans, they would never allow us to go down this road. It just wouldn't happen. And um, so I, I don't see that. I will tell you, my call center fields, you know, they field a lot of questions every day. And it typically is questions. It's, it's people that, that call us and say, I forgot what you said my plan covers. Can you help me? Very rarely do we have a situation where there's a problem. Um, we do have, like, when a plan first starts out, we'll get people to call us and say, oh, it's getting close to the deadline or the effective date. I don't have my card yet. And we, so we have to follow back up with the carrier to make sure they got their cards. But when the program's in place, we do not see, you know, the, this disruption of services or these denials 
or these things where people are, are usually getting benefits. We just don't see it. Okay. And I have one last question. What does open formulary mean? Open formulary means that they're not any specific um, ex exclusions. So it's a Medicare formulary. So when you look at carriers, um, all carriers have a different um, drug list. And I, I mentioned earlier, all carriers uh, have the right to change their tiers. So the fact that we're talking about an open formulary with Medicare means that they haven't specifically uh, have excluded uh, drugs. Thank you. And I'll go one step further on that. I think, Ed, on the comparison, you have the Excellus Blue Cross Blue Shield Blue Plan with a closed formulary. And what Medicare does is they require every carrier to have at least two drugs in every, every category of drug on their formulary. On an open formulary, it, we don't limit it to just a few drugs per category. We'll include any drug and every drug we can find out there now, maybe on a higher tier, but it's still on the formulary. Thank you. And I have a question. question. <clears throat> yep. Just, Go okay. ahead, you gonna finish something else? No, no Linda, I, was, I, I was trying to try to help answer Linda. Like Ed just said, ENV has been doing this for 31 years, and we, we do work with NYSA, and we're going to have to work with NYSA on this. If that was a concern, NYSA would tell us not, not even to come to the table. So I, I think when you start talking to some of the employees in other schools, that they will tell you that that, that just doesn't happen. Okay. Uh, you know, you can understand things are not black and white, and things are open to interpretation. Data oh, absolutely, to Linda. Interpretation. So, yeah. Okay, yep. thank you. Can, can, I, can I jump in also? Joe, statement. Are you there? Yep. Yeah, we can see you. We Linda, can see it's you. not showing your face. There though. you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Back at it. Okay. So um, the one thing that I can think of on that uh, is Linda still there? I am. Okay. I good. Am. The the one thing that I can think of, um, if you have Medicare as your primary insurance carrier, and you go to some place like an urgent care. Um, you know the place on the Vessel Parkway up by uh, the Sleep Number Beds and by Red Robin? That's closed, yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, they yeah. were a for-profit organization, and, and they did not accept Medicare upright, and they would have you sign a form walking in the door to say, if Medicare did not deem it necessary, then they, wouldn't, then they, they could bill you independently. When there's something like that, that would be the outside of normal um, occurrence, and they can bill you directly. But that would be with Blue Cross and Blue Shield, Excellus, that would be with Humana or Aetna, any one of them. So that would be the only thing that I could think of that would be a potential problem. Do you know if any of those facilities are still there? Is, did um, they just move? With, yeah, they moved. and. What happens is they're, they're going around by the colleges. You know, they're popping up right outside of the college. Ah. So college kids, you know, are away from home and they get a cold, they go there as opposed to going to one of the walk-ins. Now we've had a couple large uh, UHS and Lourdes facilities open up right around the corner. So they did close that one. But my okay. guess is as they go downtown Binghamton, they may, they may pop up again. So what do we do with that bill? Can we come that to you? Is, that bill is on the individual. If you go in and you sign a waiver that says you are personally responsible, if, you're, if your uh, insurance doesn't cover it, it's on you. And, but that's anywhere. And that's the deceitful side of those urgent care facilities. What was the and name of that people, facility? We tell people don't sign any contracts. Exactly. Asking, don't sign it because that's, they're just trying to – um, you know, they're trying to charge you more money and they're trying to make you pay money out of your pocket. Exactly. Right. Right. It was, it was actually called urgent care and their <laughs> logo was a big, um, red plus symbol. Okay. I'd like to know what happened with the podiatrist the, who didn't accept Medicare. Um, so in Harpersville, we had a podiatrist. So what happened is the, uh, the first year, the district had covered the expenses where we're to a couple hundred dollars. The second year, I believe the, um, I believe the patient chose a different doctor. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? 
Yeah, I've got one. Um, so with the self-insurance that the district might offer as a safety net for this, how long would that be in place for? Is it, Because I think people would feel better if there were no, you know, for instance, five-year sunset on something like that. Yeah, Jason, that, that's going to have to be negotiated between the CFTA and the school board. Chris, okay. Chris Wilkinson, Mary M, myself, we'll, we'll sit down, and I'll work with the guidelines of the school board, and obviously you guys will have nice at working on your side, and, and we'll, we'll come up with that determination. Okay. Anything else, Joe? Other questions? I see Mary M's on. Mary, do you want to address the sunset at all or no? Mary M? Okay. I'm going to say no, she doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions? Does she know how to unmute her microphone? Yeah. Yeah, she, yeah I think she would. Yeah, I'm not prepared to talk about that right right now in this forum. Can you okay. hear me? Yeah, yeah, Mary, we yep. can. We, I, I, mean, I just didn't know if you wanted to weigh in or not. Yeah, I, I mean, like you said, it needs to be negotiated with the CFTA negotiation team, and um, I don't, I just don't think this is the right forum to discuss that. It's certainly been a a, a big concern uh, among the actives, uh, and you know, we'll address it when we do sit down to negotiate the terms. Mary, I appreciate that. Thank you. Sure. Anything else? Okay, and our next uh, round of town halls are Thursday, I believe, Ed, starting again at noon. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Okay, same format. All right, thank you everyone for coming out and enjoy your evening. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Enjoy your night. Bye. Bye-bye. Stay safe.